think that yell that selling is yelling. So we don't necessarily want to follow the selling is yelling concept. Checking in, Dirty Kitchen, sales meeting number 39. I charged my iPad this morning with Marcus's charger so we won't die out halfway through. Good. 39, anybody that you know of 39? It's a pretty, 39. pretty random number. 39. No? No? Nope. I don't know any 39s out there. No not, 39s. Not, not worth mentioning. It's not the most popular number in the world, but... It is going to be a good sales meeting. So we're jumping into Profit Activator number three. Again, this is a little series we're taking from uh, Joe Polish and Dean Jackson. They're the direct response marketing experts out there uh, in the world. And uh, just as a touch base or a fresher, Profit Activator number one was selecting your single target market. And we discussed how to go about doing that and choosing the right one for you to focus on and dominate. Uh, yesterday, Profit Activator number two was applying the direct response method to your marketing. And then again, we talked about the difference between branding and direct response and how there's a difference for people that are needing cash flow quickly, as opposed to people that have a larger budget that can just go over name advertising versus actually asking people to get back to you with a purchase or something uh, in, in uh, similar to that. So jumping into profit activator number three today, uh, this one is, we've touched on this a lot, but it's always good to get more deep into this is what we're doing. So. Uh, it's titled, Patiently and Systematically Educate and Motivate Prospects to Meet You When They're Ready. So, when they're ready is the key word there. So the third profit activator is going to be to educate and motivate your prospects to meet you. So this is really about converting your leads, and this is where our real skill comes in, is knowing that we need to figure out how to set things up so people want to come in and meet with us. So it's take some, you know, it takes some skill to educate and motivate and compel people like we talked about having a compelling ad yesterday like mm -hmm. the car accident um, and then the other thing we need to realize is that they're only gonna meet with us when they are ready to meet with us we're not gonna force someone to buy something that they don't aren't ready to get yet so that's something that we need to keep in mind so let's just use the example again uh, that we talked about yesterday that that uh, headline how to get your business cards printed with quality for the lowest possible price. So let's say they're watching our video series that we're doing right now. So that video message, or if we're doing a free report like the, the direct mail guide, those things are all starting the process of educating and motivating our prospects to meet with us. So that's what we're doing with the, all this stuff we're putting out. And the meet you part, so when they actually come to meet us is where the actual transaction is going to occur. So whether that's when they come into our store, if we're if they're going to invite us over to, to do a quote like you did with Noble at the very beginning, or if it's something like, let's say you do a beard oil application training series and you show people how to apply beard oil on an Instagram post, something as simple as that. Um, any of those things are going to get you into that position where you can then start your sales process. So we're using that education-based marketing. So now here's the thing though, we can't just educate people send them all these reports and videos, and then just expect that they're gonna automatically line up and come start working with us. So we need, to, we need to prompt them. We need to actually make some sort of an offer because everybody's shy and reluctant to begin that first interaction. Even if you think about when you're buying something, you usually need some sort of a prompt because you don't wanna get stuck in the sales pitch if you're not really ready for it yet. But if someone prompts you with a good offer or with something that's helpful and useful and you're like, okay, I do need that, then you're ready. So we can't just do education and then just hope that we're gonna get sales from it. We've got to educate and then ask for the sales. So I think we've talked about Gary Vee's philosophy of jab, 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 right hook. Mm -hmm. So you jab them with all this nice content, this value, this education, but then you do have to eventually do the right hook and ask them for the sale. So people can get stuck in that thing of always educating and never getting anything 
sales from it because we don't ask. So um, there's a way of thinking that's kind of like that where we don't ask where it's, it's kind of a meek approach or a shy approach. So we say things like, if there's anything I can do for you, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give me a call. I'm more than happy to help. So we might be sincere when we say that, but it's a weak way to say something to someone. So, hey, if you need anything, I'm available. Just let me know. So I'm telling you I want to help you, but I'm kind of putting all the pressure on you to call me when I say something like that. So we're essentially asking the prospect to be the leader and initiate by asking us for something that we want to provide to them. So we're asking them to call us when really we need to be calling on them to get that sale. So the problem is most people don't like asking for anything, but we're helpless against people offering us something because we don't like to reject people. It's a social dynamic. It's kind of a subconscious thing where you feel bad when you let somebody down, right? Mm -hmm. So Dean Jackson uses this great example and I'll, I'll use it on you. So let's say, I say, hey Marcus, come over to my house. So you come in to my house, you get in there, you sit on the couch, you're hanging out. And I say, hey, I just gotta go step out uh, for a few minutes, I'll be back. But I've got lots of food in the fridge. Uh, just go ahead, make yourself at home, get in the fridge. If you're hungry, grab whatever you want out of there. And I might be sincere when I say that, right? So I'd say, you know, get in there, anything you need, just, just go in there and jump in. But would you really feel comfortable going into my fridge and just grabbing whatever you see in there and, and eating it? Probably not. You'd be a little bit awkward, right? Like, oh, yeah. If it was like on the table then, Okay, so you'd probably feel uncomfortable imposing, but it's kind of our culture, it's the way we're raised. But now what if I come into the living room with a freshly baked plate of cookies, hold them right in front of your face and say, hey Marcus, would you like a cookie? And then, so the point here is that it would be pretty difficult for you to say no to me after I've just made these fresh cookies and held them out and said, hey, would you like to take one? Even if you don't want the cookie, or you don't necessarily like that kind of cookie, because you just seen me go there, make them, bake them, and bring them out to you fresh, it'd be hard for you to say, ah, you know, no, I don't want one. Just because it's human nature. It's like all those candies that Lynette's brought and put right there in the fridge, yeah. it's like, <laughs> and there's Snickers but in yeah, there. But yeah, would you go into her desk and just open her desk and start grabbing chocolate? No. Nah. Even if she said, go ahead, you might, but it wouldn't be the same as if she comes out and puts it on the front counter and says, hey, would you like a chocolate bar? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, an, it's just a dynamic that helps you realize that people are silently begging to be led by somebody. So it's just an interesting concept when you think about it that way and apply it to business, how it's a lot easier to get someone to do something when you offer them instead of asking them to help themselves. Okay, so we need to make it easy for them to do that. So we talked about the difference between marketing and sales, which is where we said marketing is what gets us people into our lead in the door and then we need to get into the selling mode. So it's two different switches that we flip. We got the marketing mode, get people in. Once they're in, then we get into the sale, selling mode. So this is the before unit. And then when we get into selling mode, that's when we kick into the to the Grant Cardone stuff. But this is before that. So we're trying to get to that point. Um, so, you know, when we actually meet with them, then when they come in and we've done all of these tactics, these, these uh, education, then they're predisposed and they want to do business with us because we've got them that offer, we gave them the fresh baked plate of cookies and they want to do business with us, so it makes it a lot easier for us. So, just like in the headline, we talked about simple video reveals, how to have your business cards printed with quality at the lowest possible price. So that could be anything, free video on this website reveals, it could be a bunch of different mechanisms that we deliver information through. Um, but we could do something like the, the real estate guide where it says the seven questions to ask a printer before you hire them to print six costly misconceptions about printing, eight mistakes to avoid when choosing a printer, how to avoid four printing ripoffs, and the difference between value and price when it comes to printing. So we're putting out these things that catch people's attention. We're not necessarily selling them in those guides, but we give them all this great information that is relevant and works with anybody. So all of those things, we're educating people on how to choose the printer so that even if they never do business with us, they still gain that knowledge and they can use it and make an informed, intelligent decision wherever they choose to go. And we're adding that upfront value even though they haven't paid us for it. So when they're equipped with that information, they're a more confident buyer. And a more confident buyer is the type of buyer we want because if they have confidence with us that we're gonna provide them the great stuff because we've given them that information, then they're gonna have that rapport and they're gonna trust us and that makes Everything's easier to sell when you have people that trust you and know that you're going to give them what they want. Um, now, of course, there could be price shoppers out there. We get a lot of those that come into the front counter. 
it's just too expensive. Right, but when we put out these videos, it almost sifts, sorts, and screens them out of the process, because then if they're just curious about price, they're not really gonna waste their time watching a video that's not relevant to them. But if we get people to come to us through watching these videos, then we know that they're coming because they're interested in getting that quality business card printed properly without all the rip-offs for the best possible price. So this kind of is a way to sift out the price shoppers because they're just gonna come for price, they don't care about the value that we've added. So when we get people through this avenue, it's gonna be better clients for us. It actually gives us better prospects, better clients. So now here's the thing, if we're in a business that really does create value and delivers something good, then an educated prospect is what we want. We want someone who knows what they want, what they need and what they're looking for. Um, and it's actually the most ethical, it's not a way, it's not, we're not ripping anyone off because we're, they're getting, we've told them what they're gonna get and that's what they're getting. Now, on the flip hand, let's say that you're selling cigarettes. That might be the kind of case where you don't want to educate people because if you really tell them that cigarettes are going to cause lung cancer and throat cancer and it's going to kill them, then that might throw them off the thing. So it's important with this as whoever's watching this, if your business is something that really does truly help people and it's good for them, then there's no reason you should be scared to educate them. It's people that sell crap products that are the ones that don't want to educate people because they don't want them to know the truth of yeah. what they're selling. So um, think about the auto industry these guys talk about. So they said the auto industry likes to just blast people with the big starburst in the newspaper, a big TV or a radio ad where they just yell about a huge low price. And Hell of a sale! <laughs> yeah, and the entire industry, everybody does it. And uh, they've done it for years and years and they think that um, the louder they get, Jesus. The louder they get, the more people are going to come to them, and they they think that that's marketing and selling, but um, they're not really teaching anybody. They're not getting them pre-interested, pre-motivated, and pre-qualified. They're just getting people that are all looking for for the price, right? Mm -hmm. And they think that yell that selling is yelling. So we don't necessarily want to follow the selling is yelling concept because it might work, but it's not going to deliver those clients like we just talked about that are going to be quality good clients that are gonna pay what things are worth for good quality. So again, like we just touched on at the start, we, we can select our target market, we can run a direct response ad, we can offer that free in education, that free information. Um, we can get them motivated to meet us, but if we don't ever actually make the offer, things aren't gonna happen for us. So we need to motivate the people, we need to connect the dots, and we actually need to make the offer to start the sales process. So. We need to think about what's going to be that tastiest cookie for our target market. What is that offer that we can actually educate them and then make that offer at the end? And it's going to be that cookie we're giving them on the couch that's related to their single target market that we've set up. Um, and then again, when we do this process, it's something that if we do it right, like these guys teach, we need to be able to automate it. We can use websites, we can use video messages, we can use direct mail, we can use anything like that. Um, and, it, and if we can make it leverageable where it doesn't require us to put in our full 100% time in it, it's something we put in the time at the beginning, set up, and then we can run it over and over, that's going to be the key to really getting these oil wells pumping oil for us at all times, even when we're focusing on other things. Okay. Which is, if we can figure out how to do that, where we've got money coming in from all these different little things we've set up, then that would make our jobs easier to focus on selling the big stuff while well, we've got this repetitive order of the other stuff coming in because we've set up these processes. So if people don't buy from us and we get frustrated, we have to remember, we have to ask, did we, did we ask for the sale? And the way we finish this meeting off is it's kind of like romancing the heck out of somebody, then never asking them for the date at the end. So we can do all the romancing in the world, but if we don't ask them for the date or the dinner, the dinner, then we're never gonna get to go out with them in the, in the end. So education-based marketing, that's our meeting for today, Profit Activator number three from Dean Jackson and Joe Polish. And we'll check in with you guys tomorrow. Asking for the money. On number four, get that money, get them set up. And if, you have, if you're an ethical business doing good stuff, you have nothing to be afraid of and you don't have to feel bad about asking for the sale because you're gonna get people what they want, you're gonna add value and you're gonna make them happy and you're gonna have a lifetime client. So thanks for watching. Alpha Graphics West Ave on Instagram, AG West Ave on Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget our podcast, anchor.fm forward slash The Dirty Kitchen. We've got you covered on all angles, audio, video, reading. We got it all. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next episode. Kitchen a dirty, the dirty, the dirty. Kitchen a dirty, 
kitchen a dirty kitchen a dirty the dirty the dirty kitchen a dirty kitchen a dirty kitchen a dirty the dirty the dirty